Hello and welcome to News on NTA International. I'm Nancy Godi Angonihu and on sign language is Taiwo Ozoma. First, the headlines. <music> Business around the world hit by major information technology outage, disrupting transactions, airlines and banking operations. Nigeria deploys volunteers to assist Gambia as South Africa's president addresses opening of parliamentary proceedings. Plus, President Tinubu holds crucial meeting with security chiefs ahead of trip to Ghana for AU meeting. And the news in full, President Bola Tinubu has charged security agencies in the country to strengthen collaborations towards checkmating all forms of insecurity in the country. This was at a routine security meeting at the State House with heads of security agencies in the country. After the meeting held behind closed doors, Inspector General of Police Kayode Ebeton, who told State House correspondents that the President expressed satisfaction over improvement in security situation within the country. As Inspector General of Police, I have the records of all reported crimes across the country, and I can tell you that crime rate is declining in Nigeria. Records don't lie. The records are there. So um, I can assure you that we continue to do whatever we are doing to maintain the decline in the crime rate. emphasize the commitment of the security agencies towards restoring crude production to full capacity, soliciting the cooperation of the residents in this direction. We are targeting 2.1 million barrels per day, which is achievable. Uh, so we are taking steps to ensure that all that is required to be done is done. The president is fully aware of the cries and hues of the communities, and he has not, uh, he's not going to let them down. The communities should rest assured that steps are going to be taken to address their grievances uh, so that productions will continue. And for the criminals, those ones that are hell-bent in destroying our infrastructure, stealing our crude for whatever reason, the days are numbered. They should be rest assured that we're coming after them. And uh, we want to assure Nigerians that we all need to put hands together to achieve this success. Nobody can do it alone. No single service, no single individual can do this. We all need to work together, including the states. Uh, we understand that communities are going through so much, and uh, the president is going to address those issues uh, to ensure that we have full production. President Bola Tinubu will on Saturday, July the 20th, depart Abuja for Accra, Ghana, to participate in the sixth mid-year coordination meeting of the African Union. The Regional Economic Communities REC, the Regional Mechanisms RMS, and the African Union Member States. In his capacity as the Chairman of ECOWAS Authority of Heads of State and Government, President Tinubu will address the meeting on the status of regional integration across various areas in Africa, highlighting the achievements and challenges encountered in West Africa since the last meeting in Nairobi, Kenya in July 2023. In a statement by presidential spokesperson Ajuri Ngelali, the president and chairman of ECOWAS, we present the 2024 report on the state of the community, focusing on peace, regional security, governance, economic integration, humanitarian and social development, as well as energy, mines and agriculture. The meeting will be convened under the AU theme of the year 2024, Educate and Skill Africa for the 21st century. The media coordination meeting was conceptualized in 2017 as the principal forum for the AU and the Rex to align their work and coordinate the implementation of the continental integration agenda, replacing the June-July summits. In July 2023, President Tinubu was elected as the chairman of the ECOWAS and was delivering, while delivering his maiden speech at the AU Fifth Media Coordination Meeting in Nairobi, Kenya, he affirmed Africa's strength and the need for unity. And in Accra, the items on the agenda will include evaluating the AU's early warning and conflict prevention mechanisms 
and promoting cooperation among regional economic communities to accelerate integration. A declaration will be adopted at the end of the meeting. President Tunubu, who will be accompanied by senior government officials, will return to the country at the conclusion of the meeting. A raft of global institutions, including major banks, media outlets, and airlines, have reported a mass information technology outage affecting their ability to offer services. Francis Udojo tells us more. Several airlines have been grounded as flights around the world and many more are reporting delays. Travel plans around the globe have also been thrown into disarray with airlines, taxis and rail affected. The U.S. state of Alaska has warned that its emergency services are affected while supermarkets in Australia have been crippled and media outlets in several countries have been left scrambling as systems failed and a major news outfit in the UK was temporarily forced off air. The cause of the outage is unclear but many of those impacted have linked it to Microsoft PC operating systems. An official Microsoft 365 service update posted on X earlier in the day said they are investigating the issues impacting users' ability to access various Microsoft 365 applications and services. Report says a spokesperson for the Home Affairs Ministry in Australia, which has been particularly hard hit, said the outage appeared to be related to an issue at a cybersecurity firm, while the country's cybersecurity watchdog affirmed no information to suggest a malicious attack. Social media users have reported problems making payments and also trouble accessing financial institutions. Francis Dojo, NT News. Kenya's President William Ruto on Friday named a partial a new cabinet as he starts a process to form a broad-based government after a month of widespread and deadly protests against his administration. In an address, President Ruto unveiled the names of 11 proposed ministers after last week sacking of almost his entire cabinet as he seeks to contain the worst crisis of his nearly two-year presidency. He said, and I quote, while the events of the past month have caused tremendous anxiety, concern and uncertainty, the crisis has presented us with a great opportunity as a nation to craft a broad-based and inclusive citizen coalition for national transformation and progress made up of Kenyans from all walks of life." End of quote. The relationship between fundamental rights and democratic freedoms, our collective aspirations for prosperity and efforts to secure opportunities for all and the imperative to advance national sovereignty and the security of the state. I have started the process of forming a new broad-based cabinet to assist in driving the urgently needed and irreversible transformation of our country. I am continuing to undertake consultations across the political divide on the balance of cabinet that I will appoint shortly. He put forward 11 names for cabinet ministers and the attorney general that will go before parliament for approval. However, several of those nominated were members of the previous government, including Kiture Kindiki, and the head of the interior ministry, which is in charge of Kenya's under fire police force. Now, South Africa's President Cyril Ramaphosa has committed his new coalition government to growth, job creation and poverty reduction as he opened the parliament following the first elections in which his ruling ANC party lost its absolute majority. Francis Rodojo brings us details. Addressing a joint sitting of the two houses of parliament after a grand opening ceremony, with a display of military pageantry, Ramaphosa also listed tackling the high cost of living and cutting bureaucracy among his administration's goals. Ramaphosa's long dominant African National Congress, ANC, was forced into an uneasy coalition with nine other parties after May's elections, having lost its absolute parliamentary majority for the first time since 1994. 
damaged by graft scandals and a poor economic record. The party that led the fight against apartheid won only 40% of the votes. The result reflected deepening disillusionment with unemployment at a record 33% and high poverty and crime rates. In striking the unprecedented power-sharing deal, the ANC aligned itself with the central right, a move some analysts said will reassure investors. We are committed to improve the well-being of our country and its people through inclusive growth, the creation of jobs, and the reduction of poverty. In his address, Ramaphosa promised business-friendly reforms such as an overhaul of the graft reading public service and a massive increase in investment infrastructure. However, the former trade unionist added that growth must be inclusive and support the unemployment of black South Africans and women and all those who in the past had been relegated to the fringes of the nation's economy. Francis Udojo, NT News. Ukrainian President Volodymyr Zelensky has addressed British government ministers, which is a rare appearance by a foreign leader at a cabinet meeting at the new minister Keir Stammer hopes will underline London's support for Kyiv. A day after hosting a forum of European leaders at Berlin Palace, Starmer pressed on with his bid to raise Britain's role in international affairs by inviting Zelensky to address his cabinet of top ministers. Welcomed to the meeting by a standing ovation and applause from British ministers, Zelensky renewed his call for Western allies to allow long-range strikes on Russia, saying Britain should try to convince its partners to remove the limits on their use. NATO members have taken different approaches to how Ukraine can use weapons they donate. Stammer, who met Zelensky separately for 35 minutes before a wider bilateral with officials, told Zelensky that Britain will speed up delivery on, of aid to Ukraine. Stammer also unveiled the Defense Export Support Treaty to be signed by different ministers that will enable Ukraine to draw on £3.5 billion of export finance to bolster both countries' defense industrial bases and boost production. His defense minister said earlier this month that the deliveries promised to by the former conservative government will be delivered within 100 days. This is news on NT International. We take a break. A new batch of volunteers of the Nigerian Technical Aid Corps has departed for the Gambia. The 11 volunteers who comprised professionals from diverse backgrounds, including law, engineering, and expertise in entrepreneurial studies, were urged to see their new charge as a call to serve humanity. Kelvin Iwunaye reports. At the pre-departure orientation for the volunteers, Director General of the Nigerian Technical Aid Corps, Dr. Yusuf Buba Yakub, congratulated them for being among the very few beneficiaries of the 37-year-old scheme chosen from a long list of over 10,000 applicants when the agency advertised late last year. While admonishing the volunteers to see themselves not as individuals, but as Nigeria itself, Dr. Buba noted that a batch of volunteers were selected based on interaction with the Antony General and Minister of Justice of the Gambia, Mr. Dawood Ujawara, who used the opportunity to identify some of the skills that are lacking in their country and requested TAC to rise in filling those gaps identified. We are sending you out on behalf of uh, the President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, President Bola Ahmed Tinubu, uh, to contribute and share the abundant human resource that we have with our sister nation, the Gambia. Having been given this opportunity uh, to fly the Nigerian flag, I will not disappoint the country. I will not disappoint this organization. The volunteers will serve in the Gambia for 24 months in areas that will be assigned to them by the benefiting country. In Abuja, Kelvin Ewonwaye, NTA News. United Nations Climate Change Executive Secretary Simon Steyl says climate action is an investment, not a cost, which delivers returns on investment in new clean infrastructure and generates economic growth. 
He said this while reacting to the hurricane burial disaster on the island of Karekil, United States. Official reports are that 98% of homes and buildings have either been destroyed or severely damaged by this most recent record-breaking hurricane barrel. From the largest and most developed nations to the smallest and most vulnerable. Whether it's my home island of Karakou, the United States, India, Kenya, or any country on earth, what happens in the next three months, the next three years, to the families still living under tarpaulins, still in debt to the bank for a home that no longer stands as the next brutal storm, flood, or wildfire approaches, fueled by the climate crisis. Rather than just count the costs of climate carnage, all governments must supercharge efforts to prevent them. This means all governments must put climate action back at the top of cabinet agendas. The federal government of Nigeria has unveiled a comprehensive strategy to lead Africa's digital trade revolution within the framework of the African Continental Free Trade Agreement. Vice President Kashim Shetima said Nigeria must lead the way to this future of this peculiar wave of the industrial revolution at a stakeholders summit with the theme, Digital Trade in Africa, the Renewed Hope Strategy. State House correspondent Abdurrahman Jibrila reports. The strategy is to harness trade as a catalyst for economic growth and continental cohesion in line with the Africa Continental Free Trade Agreement objectives and Nigeria is in a unique position to spearhead the continent's technological transformation. <laughs> Vice President Kashim Shetima at the summit outlined key components of the roadmap to include implementation of digital trade protocol and the development of expansive technical talent hubs. The details to that feature are already here. There are knowledge production, strategic policy implementation, critical infrastructure, disruptive innovation, entrepreneurship and capital and trade. This gathering to reduce digital trade in Africa is yet another opportunity for us to review our commitments to expanding investments in the digital economy. AFCFTA, therefore, underlines our leadership in this sector, and now is the time to assert our presence to strategies that create opportunities for our tech-savvy nation. We're probably also aware that the Nigerian interbank settlement system is one of the best in the world, not just in Africa. And this is why Nigeria today has over five unicorns within the financial technology space. And the implication of this is that every Nigerian business can actually easily transact with people from across the continent because we have the technology to make this happen. Identify the key opportunities for enhancing digital trade within the AFCT framework. We will also discuss the effective strategies to ensure a coordinated approach to implement this AFCT digital trade protocol and also how we to enhance the economic growth of Nigeria. Nigeria is also investing significantly in every aspect of the digital trade protocol with a view to harnessing opportunities in the country and continent at large within the single market area that could best be harnessed through effective collaboration and networking facilitated by digital technology. Um, we love trade that much that we join regional trade agreements when well, we're not even in the region. <laughs> so that's how much we love it. Um, because we understand that the bilateral agreements uh, don't have to be one size fits all. They, they can allow for different types of economies, different levels of commitment, different types of speed and joining up to those commitments. And that's what the African Continental Free Trade Agreement is. Some of our analysis shows that the digital trade protocol and a 10% rise in digital connectivity in Nigeria can increase its GDP by 11 to 13%. It can give rise to employment by 15 to 40% and expand its exports from 16 to 60%. Other stakeholders commended Nigeria for its visionary approach 
and leadership in prioritizing digital trade, pledging commitment to support the operationalization of the agreement. From the State House, Abraham Jibrila, NTA News. Professor Titi Lola Titilayo Obilade has unveiled the first inaugural lecture on health at the Nile University, Abuja. Health Messaging Currency for Today, Saving for Tomorrow is the title of the lecture. Charles Alpha reports that the lecture highlights Professor Obilade's contributions to knowledge, health and governance in both the national and international arena. Inaugural lectures are said to be the hallmark of any tertiary institution, a statutory requirement, research, and an academic exercise which seeks to engage critical players on findings that can serve as policy guide for governance, institutions, and private organizations. An inaugural lecture is like an initiation of an academic into professorhood. It is said that any professor that has reached that post and have not done his inaugural lecture is still yet to start. This is what now University and oh, Professor Titi Lola Titi Layo Obilade like have accomplished. A judge as one of the most versatile and accomplished maiden lecture delivered brilliantly with eloquence and prestige. The inaugural lecture titled Health Messaging, Currency for Today, Savings for Tomorrow by Professor Titi Lola Titi Layo Obilade identifies communication as a veritable tool for promoting behaviors, policies, and practices that advance health and well-being of a people. So what health messaging is, it encompasses everything in health and outside health. Look at the polio, I gave an example. If I'm able to prevent a disease, I don't even need to have to take antibiotics. That's a lot of money saved. The inaugural lecture also highlights Professor Obilade's contributions to knowledge, such as global health, communities, institutions, as well as governance within and outside the shores of Nigeria. A search of Obilade reveals that three of the CDC publications have cited my article on stigmatization of the Ebola virus disease. The CDC is the national health watchdog for the United States of America. Further, my article on stigmatization of EBD has been cited in Italian, French, and Indonesian languages. For the Vice Chancellor, Nile University of Nigeria, Professor Dili Dogo, the inaugural lecture marks a significant milestone in the university's commitment to foster academic excellence and intellectual growth. Here yeah, in Nile University, we place a lot of emphasis on research. And when you do a lot of research, the most important thing is to push out that research so that it can be converted to policy and used to better the society. And that's what we are doing. The lecture recommended incorporation of visual literacy in school curriculum with leaflets accompanying medication to students of all grades while suggesting drugs produced in Algeria should come with braille or assistive technology. Charles Alf, NT News. The federal government says it has taken measures to address the food challenges affecting internally displaced persons in Nigeria. The Minister of Agriculture and Food Security, Abubakar Kiari, stated this when he hosted the United Nations Commissioner for Refugees in Abuja, Musa Baba Aliyu, was there. The United Nations said Nigeria is housing 3% of the 120 million internally displaced persons and refugees around the world. Most of the displaced persons are from rural farming communities, thereby affecting agricultural activities. The Minister of Agriculture and Food Security said the government is worried about this situation and efforts are underway to address their plight. He said the ministry, in partnership with the Refugee Commission, is establishing a farm settlement for IDPs in Plateau, Nasarawa, and Borno states. We intend to cultivate 500. Uh, 150 
United Nations High Commissioner for Refugees, representative in Nigeria, Arjun Jain, said the agency will work with government organizations to support displaced persons around the country through agriculture. But we are trying to come up with a solution. We're trying to see if we can come up with a solution that could help address two or three of the key government priorities, including food security, as well as employment. And this is part of your renewable agenda. But also look at uh, to see how we can address some of the sustainable development goals uh, that we would like to achieve, and also find solutions for displaced communities. The Minister of Agriculture is also working with FAO and World Food Programme in addressing malnutrition in troubled rural communities. Musa Baba Aliyu, NTA News. Saturday's weather forecast is next. That's it on the news on NTA International. Taiwo Ozoma has been on sign language and I'm Nancy Godiangunihu. Thanking you.